when we're seeking to understand disaster risk, we keep in mind the, the, the disaster risk equation, where risk is a function of the hazard, the exposure, and the vulnerability. The hazard is the, the nature of different types of adverse natural events, like ground shaking and earthquakes, excess rainfall that causes floods. Over half of all floods in the world actually occur in South Asia. There's the Himalayan mountain belt, and there's significant seismic risk. Major earthquakes happen on a pretty regular basis, as well as cyclone risk, especially in the Bay of Bengal, where Bangladesh in particular is very highly exposed. The current exposure of the assets of, of the structures in the region are quite vulnerable to different types of events. As economic development continues, there's different types of land issues, and this is creating lots of challenges with flooding in the region. In South Asia, we're taking an approach which is looking to really marry both climate change and disaster risk management in a way that is a bit more integrated than happens in, in a lot of parts of the world in, in, in terms of sitting down together, trying to work closely, and we're working on a few really specific types of uh, activities. First, we're looking to value the, the cost of climate change going forward. How is it that we can demonstrate this on a project by project basis where we incorporate climate change risk, where we incorporate the prob increased probability of different types of negative events that are occurring, and how is it that we can reflect that in our project documentation for disastrous management and any sort of infrastructure development projects. In terms of tools, we're really focusing on the Open Cities Initiative, creating a toolkit, more or less, which is a recipe to help different organizations and different teams replicate this in their cities. Our, our pilots right now, Kathmandu, Sri Lanka, and Dhaka, are our are, are testing ground for the approach. In the past and in many, many parts of the world, to understand uh, disaster risk, we would hire consultants and ask them to assess the risk of, an, of a built environment. What we learned is that when, when that job is outsourced and when it's given to consultants that, that, that go away, do a study and come back 18 months later to, uh, to, to disseminate the results of that, um, that process and, and, and their analysis, what we find is that there's not as much ownership on the side of the government decision makers um, about the risks that they face. So given that approach, the, some of the limitations to that approach, and the fact that we really need to raise awareness of disaster risk with key decision makers in South Asia, we're, we're doing it a, sort of the hard way. This means we're convening a large number of uh, government decision makers as well as technical um, experts within agencies of government and outside of government to help understand the risk. Well, the first main challenge is really putting this on the agenda. Uh, governments, um, especially ministries of finance, really aren't that aware of disaster risk and they don't necessarily uh, have a solid understanding relative to some of the other regions in terms of the fact that this risk can be understood. A second challenge is to focus on working on the technical side. What's interesting in South Asia is the capacity is very high, so we're really focused on engaging with the technical class, whether that be within the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Planning, or the line ministries who are charged with infrastructure development. The third challenge is, is really trying to get in front of the curve. When we look at South Asia, the exposure is growing significantly. Over the next 50 years, half a billion people are going to move to cities in South Asia. So we need to help those governments understand how to manage this, this inflow of, uh, of people in a disaster-resilient way.